The SCP Foundation has interrupted your standard broadcast to issue a threat level Apollyon announcement. SCP-001 exists in a timeline where the Foundation failed to contain an Apollyon-class entity, and as a consequence, humanity was eradicated. The Apollyon class was created specifically for SCPs with world-ending potential, named after the Greek name for Abaddon, a biblical entity, the Archangel of the Abyss, the Exterminator, the Destroyer. As such, very few SCPs ever received this designation. There had also been much discussion within the Foundation regarding which entity should receive the disturbingly prestigious title of SCP-001, but the few who survived the Daybreak agreed that this extinction entity was not only a Polyon class, but given the effect it had on planet Earth, had more than earned the title of 001. This video log is being recorded at Site 7, one of the few remaining Foundation bunkers sheltering survivors. We're creating it with the intention of educating those few of us still out there about SCP-001 and how to live as safely as is possible in this new world that we've been thrust into. All information in this log has been scrapped together from reports and findings logged from other sites some of which remain active and some of which have since gone dark. Additional files and revisions to existing reports are being discovered as I record this and so I have no idea how long this log will end up being but it's not like any of us are pressed for time anymore if there's even anyone out there to listen to this. Given that we're still finding new reports and revisions, the state of what remains of humanity may change throughout this log. For that, I'm afraid you've been warned. Within 24 hours of the emergence of SCP-001, the death toll was speculated to be in excess of 6.8 billion human beings. Based on research conducted by those few who survived the Daybreak, this entity that caused this appears to be the Sun. Sight and system degradation in the years since emergence has led to some data being lost and or corrupted, but the remaining findings of several tests seem to indicate that the SCP-001 effect, which we will come to in a moment, is the result of exposure to light on the visual spectrum, regardless of whether this exposure is direct or indirect. All visible light between the wavelengths of 390 nanometers to 700 nanometers that comes from the sun is to be avoided at all costs. This includes reflective sources of light as well, such as moonlight. Any exposure to this source of light, regardless of how big or small the point of exposure is, causes the victim to liquefy at the point of contact, with the effect spreading across the body until it is liquefied in its entirety. Visual reports of this effect liken it to melting wax. At no point throughout this liquefaction process, though, does the victim actually seem to die. Once fully liquefied, the victim takes on a gelatinous consistency and will attempt to orient themselves in a fashion reminiscent of their previous form to varying levels of success. Human victims appear to retain a modicum of sapience and memory, so throughout the entire process, and also in the aftermath, they are very much conscious and sentient and, to some degree, still alive. In this new, horrific form, affected entities that come into contact with one another combine and blend at the molecular level. This does not appear to cause any pain or distress, but depending on the resulting form, can inhibit movement. In the years following the event, most of these 6.8 billion afflicted have morphed together into these gestalt forms, and it appears they have no maximum volume, they can combine and grow indefinitely. These combined entities simply resemble a blob of amorphous and chaotic biomass. 
The component organisms will alternate between a full to semi-liquid state, with limbs and body parts emerging periodically from the biomass before deteriorating and being absorbed by another life form within the collective. To move, the biomass will use its appendages to carry itself, and in larger forms, the entity will form a sort of pseudopod from their constituent life forms and drag itself across the ground, leaving a trail of smeared liquids and biomass. Fauna and flora affected by SCP-001 remain physically inert, but are still able to conduct photosynthesis, and thus still provide oxygen, and remain sentient also, displaying behaviour identical to that of their normal selves when not absorbed by the biomass. Due to the immense heat now given off by the sun's rays, however, much of the surface is entirely uninhabitable and oceans have almost entirely dried up. Any organism capable of flight has lost the ability to do so, likely to ensure that these creatures are within range of the biomass for consumption. The Foundation failed to contain SCP-001 because of its nature. You, you can't contain the sun or the light that it produces. Whatever happened to it or whatever entity neutralised it has succeeded. They've won. Humanity must now embrace the darkness and fear the light. If we as a species wish to continue to coexist in secrecy with this neutralised sun, the Foundation implores you to remain in contact with any other survivors located within secure facilities, and as per these logs, to attempt to reach Site-19 by any means possible. Site-19 is currently being established as a safe haven for survivors, and those running it need all the hands they can get to help keep it running. Site-5 was to be the original safe haven, but based on a number of unconfirmed reports, it appears compromised. By the sounds of it, Site-19 is one of our final hopes. Those stationed at Site-19 are ordered to pursue research concerning off-world colonisation. Our only hope as a species is to abandon our home and attempt to start again in a dark corner of the galaxy, one where the light cannot reach. All shuttles produced must not in any circumstance allow light to penetrate the interior. Any personnel or individual with knowledge regarding the whereabouts of the O5 Council, the founders and overseers of the Foundation, are to relay this information to an administrator. The existence and identity of these individuals is no longer classified. Yes, they exist, the conspiracy theories were right, and they need to be found ASAP if evacuation of planet Earth is to ever be achieved. If you're considering travel, then travel by air is the safest option. Any individual attempting to travel outdoors must fully cover their bodies in several layers of protective clothing to prevent the light from striking their skin, and wherever possible, travel by foot should be avoided. Cities and man-made structures in general provide the greatest protection from the light, provided of course that windows are avoided and or blocked. Formerly wooded areas, however, should be circumvented. Any victim exposed to the light, or I guess SCP-001 as we should now refer to it as, are to be considered lost and should be abandoned, regardless of who they are. Do not, under any circumstance, attempt euthanization. Death has been compromised and is no longer the end. It will only inflict more pain on the victim. We will elaborate more on that in a moment. If any SCP-001 collective forms are encountered, referred to from here on out as SCP-001-A, they should be avoided at all costs. However, in the unfortunate event that you are spotted, electrical weapons have proven effective at immobilising them in self-defence. Incendiary weapons seem to inflict partial damage to them, and cryonic munitions appear to be the most effective as of now. Given the effect that SCP-001 has had on the ecosystems of the world, food is likely to become very scarce. Preliminary tests have, however, proven that SCP-001-A biomass is relatively safe to consume, but only as a last resort. Because it may need to be reconstituted within the digestive system, only small volumes should be consumed to prevent internal blockages. 
It is, of course, advised that one should not consume the biomass given its nature, but for many, there may not be an alternative. Before I continue any further with these logs, the administrator of Site-19 has left an audio log that I've been asked to play to you all. To those of you with families, or God forbid, children, I'm deeply, deeply sorry. You must push on. Do not let their deaths be in vain. We do still have time. Humanity may still have a future. Come to Site-19. We need all the hands we can get. Learn to embrace the darkness, friends. Fear the light. But the horror of SCP-001 doesn't end there. The effect of the daybreak of <laughs> went beyond just environmental and light-based changes. 110 days following the initial filing of SCP-001, presumably Emergence Day, the entry was updated and an incident report from an unknown site was attached. This report details a number of individuals trapped in a facility with an SCP-001-A entity outside. They noted that the creature was just sitting outside the building, calling to them and begging for them to come outside. The noise it was making drew more of them, biomass blobs of humans and animals alike, screaming and bleating and screeching and howling non-stop, louder than all hell, making disgusting moaning sounds that sounded like they were actually enjoying it. When they realised the creature wasn't going to leave as long as it knew they were down there, they managed to convince a Class D expendable personnel to go outside and draw them away, a plan that apparently he was surprisingly okay with. Armed with a pistol and a mask, the Class D went outside but was quickly grabbed by the Collective. As it tried to pull his mask off, he managed to shoot himself, much to the relief of everyone still inside. They thought that he'd finally escaped this hell. But once his body fell limp, the creature began prying his suit off and poured itself inside, tearing it off him from within. The man then subsequently came back to life and started changing, dripping out of his suit and screaming eternally. They won't even let us die. The incident report ended with the author detailing their plan to use a hidden escape tunnel in their director's office to access a tram network underground that will take them to a safe house and from there, they can begin travelling to Site-19. Two days later, a further revision was made and a video file was attached. The video is of a doctor, Dr. Logan Igotta, staring at the camera with a pained look. It turned out that she was the only survivor of this group that tried to get to Site-19. In the tunnels, an SCP-001-A entity flowed in through the roof and dragged the other members of her group into the light, liquefying them and forming a new SCP-001-A entity that is now locked in those dark tunnels. One member of this group, named Ari, was Logan's wife, and during the video log, what little remained of Ari tried contacting Logan over the radio, talking to her in a disgusting, gurgling tone. The tone of the afflicted. It started beating her with memories and words that only Ari would know, trying to comfort Logan as if she was still alive and trying to bait her into the tunnels and into the light, but Logan knew full well that it wasn't Ari talking. It was a Dash A biomass that was stuck in the tunnels. The only thing Logan still had of her wife was her severed ring finger, which she kept in her breast pocket. As the video log came to a close, Logan was visibly tortured hearing her dead wife's memories being twisted and contorted, and it only got worse as it began singing their song. More voices joined in the chorus, creating a horrifying mess of the distorted voices of ones that she once loved, and the video ended. 214 days later, another video log was attached featuring Logan Igotta, once again, sitting before the camera, now wasting away with wide, bloodshot eyes, and on the table in front of her, a knife, a bowl, and a stack of envelopes, atop which was a bloodstained parchment. 
She starts going on about how despite everything they dealt with at the Foundation, everything they encountered, everybody who worked there always believed that they would be able to maintain control and keep this darkness and evil at bay and allow mankind to flourish in the light. But with Site-19 going dark, that's news to us, we'll have to process that. Um, she says that it's getting harder and harder for her to keep going. She keeps going down to the door that connects to the tunnel just to listen to Ari's voice again, but knows full well that it's not her anymore. It sounds like her, it knows what she knew, but it, it isn't her. The light takes your body, steals your mind. But what about your soul, she contemplates. She then slices open her hand with the knife and drains the blood into the bowl. Now, her intentions with this are unclear. We don't quite know what she's doing with her blood. We presume it's something to do with a strange kind of ritual. But she proceeds to say, if this works, if I can bring back something, something the light couldn't reach, I'll post an update here. For now, signing off. A day later, a peculiar set of revisions is made to SCP-001's file, corrupting its text and adding strange entries that don't appear to come from anything human. SCP-001 should not be contained. Survivors of the SCP-001 event stationed within secure facilities can never truly be with one another. Personnel are encouraged to get over themselves and stop thinking they know better. You can't hide down there forever, love. Personnel exposed to SCP-001 aren't people you can just abandon. I didn't ask for you to save me, it wasn't your choice to make. Euthanization is not, 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 not to be attempted. Personnel stationed at Site-19 have no regrets. Neither did I. It's never too late, babe. SCP-001 is the designation given to the sun after we finally became free. The effects are instantaneous, resulting in release from all suffering until you ripped me away. These changes seem scary, I know. Despite this restructuring, at no point will you die. I promise. Due to their composition, instances of SCP-001-A that make contact with one another may combine and blend and finally exist. This does not cause any pain. Since the SCP-001 event, most instances have congregated into such collectives which seem to possess no maximum volume. The resulting biomass is beautiful. The component organisms will shift in and over and around and through and in and out and in and out and in, limbs and bodies hold, never letting go. Alas, one, before deteriorating and being subsumed by another life form. Collective instances will locomote by just trying to get close to you again. Trying so hard. Let me in. Further, it appears a video file was also attached, seemingly recorded from one of the security cameras in Logan's room. Against the far wall of the dark dwelling lies Dr. Igotta, asleep on a pile of laundry, writhing and turning and mumbling nonsense words as if she's tormented or hurt. The camera then shakes, lifting upward for a moment before refocusing on her, but then it starts moving slowly closer and the speakers come to life, broadcasting an airy, breathy static. As the camera gets closer and closer to Logan, the static becomes clearer, no longer sounding like white noise, rather hundreds of voices whispering unintelligibly over each other, speaking not to Logan, but to the to the viewer. Are you paying attention? This next bit is just for you. The camera then comes to a halt inches from Logan and all audio ceases. A black, oily, skeletal hand then reaches out and brushes her hair. Her eyes shoot open, she recoils and the video just ends there. There was then a 984 day gap in which no entries, revisions or Updates were seemingly given, and no additional files within the database were found, but as of yesterday, that changed. Yesterday, from Site-19, which was thought to be entirely compromised as per Logan Igotta's entries, a final video log was attached, featuring Logan once again sat before her camera, her hair thinning and falling out, and 
her eyes were so washed out and recessed into her skull that if it's if it weren't for the glow of the screen, there would have been no way for us to tell that they were even there still. She also doesn't seem to blink anymore. Something clearly happened after that last video log because she starts talking in a crazed manner, saying that she won't go away. I didn't pick up an info hazard browsing the archives, I tested negative for SCP-8673 infection. SCP-9189 is the only one that uses print as a vector, it can't be that. I still have all my fingers. Likely referring to the strange revisions made to the SCP-001 entry. Her lips then cracked into a broken grin and she let out a, a weak laugh, displaying her trembling and rather skeletal hands. She appears to have severed her ring finger and embedded her wife, Ari's ring finger that she kept, into the fleshy stump where hers once was. It's starting to get clear that her thin mask of sanity has all but slipped. She keeps repeating herself, saying that she's not infected and that the ritual worked. It's really her. Likely something to do with the bloodletting. But then something catches her attention off screen and she begins listening to it, but recoils against whatever it is she can hear, saying, you're not the same, it's not you anymore. She then begins to rub her temple aggressively, repeating herself over and over, before snapping back up to the camera. It's her, but it, it's not. What I brought back, still a part of O1, there's, there's no way, no way out, no way. There's no hope for a future for me, and God, I can't, can't go on like this any longer. I'll be safe here. The light can't reach me. I won't let it take me. She then shows a handgun, but says that she won't be using it. She found some leftover meds that she plans on using instead. I think considering that death is no longer the end, she doesn't want to draw any attention to her body, so she can at least have peace for some time before inevitably an SCP-001-A finds her. She ends the log by apologising to her family and to Ari, and the video ends. On the database, though, there does appear to be one remaining update, filed sometime yesterday after that video. We don't know who or what filed this update, if anyone or anything is still alive within Site-19, but we don't think that this update was made by anything human. Saffron skies raise the blazing sun. A chance encounter, awkward displays. One day, my love, we'd be as one. With two entwined, a set course begun. The frenetic, wild, lustrous haze, as your skies host the radiant sun. Above us, beaming as we run, down that aisle of fervent craze. That day, my love, we became as one. With future unfolded, the life we'd won, commitment and duty for the family we'd raise, Cerulean skies ferry the shimmering sun. Buried, shackled by fate, overrun by ever-growing resent and malaise. Yesterday, my love, we were as one. Now you lie here, the life in you gone, in the dark outside of her rays. Crimson skies bear the torch, our sun. Today, my love, will be as one. <clears throat> Site 7 remains the only known safe haven for any remaining survivors. Site 5, Site 17, Site 64, and now clearly Site 19 have all been compromised. We still plan on getting off planet eventually, but we, we need all the help we can get. So, if you're hearing this, all hope is not lost. Come to Site 7 and help us escape the light. And that, my friends, is SCP-001, When Day Breaks. The true SCP-001, if you ask me. Honestly, I don't really find SCPs or anything like that to be, like, that creepy on the whole, but honestly, this one was different. There's something about the idea of the sun, something that is totally inescapable, being neutralized by some strange hostile entity and literally weaponized against us before we can even react that is so chilling. Honestly though, I don't really know why the remaining Foundation members were so focused on getting off Earth. I mean, 
It's not like Earth is the only planet in the galaxy that the sun's light rays impact. It's not just Earth that's been compromised by this, it's realistically the entire damn solar system, which makes it even more terrifying, quite honestly. Some real, real creepy stuff. Once again, I want to give a huge shout out to all of the artists whose art I featured in this video. Links to all of them can be found in the description. And also, thank you to Racevic for offering a bit of VA for this video. I think it fit really nicely. Uh, so again, if you somehow don't know who Racevic is, go and check him out. His link is in the description. But yeah, that's going to do it for today. I want to give a massive thank you to all of my amazing patrons for the continued support as per usual. And thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Also, seeing as this is going to be my last video before Christmas. Merry Christmas to you all. I hope you all have a really, really, uh, what's the word? What's that word that I always use? Oh yeah. Hope you have an iconic Christmas, my friends, and I'll catch you all in the next one.